Verbal. Our life. Okay, welcome to Verbal on Life. My name is Noel, battling MS. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. It's something that I always wanted to do for a minute, but I found a great video that I want to share with you guys and we could talk about it, you know? By the way, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure to hit that like button. Hopefully you're entertained by this podcast, well, at least for today's episode. Now let's take a look. This is a video from Podcast Cringe, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. Now, if you haven't seen it already, Jake Paul dropped one of his most cringy videos ever, and that's saying a lot. It was basically one giant ad for Netflix and his upcoming fight with Tyson in July, and it was- By the way, let me just give a shout out. We up to 3,900 subscribers. So let me pay a little bit of respect. Everybody who just subscribed to this channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is my newfound career after I retired. So I don't have to go to work nine to five. So this is my new nine to five. I just got to figure out the nuances and how to get more subscribers. And I think one way of doing this is to take, to talk less about what the hell I'm doing and take more about topics in real life and be verbal on life. All right, let's take a look. And real quick, before I get started, Jay Paul versus Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is an old man. So, oh man, it's gonna be like, oh, I don't know, they're gonna, how are they gonna pull it off to make the fight look real? But shout out to Mike Tyson, he's 57 was full of little gags and parodies of Tyson, he even went so far as to get a fake face tattoo, just like Mike's. You heard it right, mother. Fighting Mike Tyson. And then he did all these parodies of famous Mike Tyson moments, such as biting off Evander Holyfield's ear, various TV interviews. Jake Paul is the entertainer part one. That's his main priority to entertain the viewers, to get more viewers to watch. The man is a genius, that's the way to do it. And the more people view, the more money he gets. So all this, gotta give him a shout out, gotta give him props. Is where Mike went off script. They even CGI'd a white tiger in there, just like Mike, as well as parodying a bunch of classic Mike Tyson interviews. Basically, Tyson's carrying the fight promotion because, as you can imagine, the mainstream Netflix audience probably has no idea who Jake Paul really is. And if you thought the acting was bad in those clips, just take a look at these completely scripted conversations where Jake tells his family members about the fight because, you know, cameras just follow this guy around, right? Growing up, who was your favorite boxer? Mike Tyson. Yeah. Mike, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> um, I'm going to be fighting him. No way. In July. Dude. On Netflix. Are you fucking kidding me, Dad? Yeah. Now, Jake Paul is way younger than Mike Tyson. So it's going to be an ugly fight. But let's see what understanding. Let's see what they agreed upon. Because they have to like practice and try it out and talk about who's going to win. In my opinion. He's going to be the hardest hitting motherfucker you ever fought. I know. <laughs> Dude, holy, I'm gonna be freaking out. Yeah, I'm gonna fight Mike Tyson on that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Do it. Do it. Oh <laughs> my God! No oh, way. Man. Yeah, I need your ears. I'm so sorry. <laughs> These people just make money looking at the camera and talking, entertaining viewers like us. I can't believe it. that was Nina's first question. What if he eats your ears? Hang on, hang on. Did you guys notice that too? Why were Jake and his dad sitting there on the lounge watching the screensaver on the television? Come on, guys, check the reflections. Jesus. And why is Logan Paul sitting around wearing nothing but a towel? Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Jake Paul has been floating the idea of fighting Tyson for years now. He said everything from I'm not stupid, I'd never step in the ring with him, to straight up calling him out a couple of years ago, which at the time caught everyone's attention. But the whole influence of boxing thing has been done so many times now that everyone thought it was basically dead in the water. 
Logan Paul was a pioneer with his exhibition match against Floyd Mayweather Jr., where Mayweather appeared to literally carry him through the fight, only to be overshadowed by probably the biggest fail in boxing history, Logan Paul versus Dylan Dennis. Man, I'm glad I didn't pay for that fight. And so for the most part, Joe Rogan was happy to promote them and support what they were doing because he thought they were legitimate athletes with legitimate boxing skills. What do you think about like now that they have like celebrities do guest masks like Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul? Logan Paul actually does some wild. Yeah, he's, he's really he, good. He, he, he does some wild. He really does. Jumping off the top ropes and slamming into each other yeah. in the middle. I'm like, that's yeah. some serious yeah. athleticism. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell them, both those kids are half tough. I always tell people, watch, just forget that Jake Paul is a YouTube guy and watch him box. Yeah. Kid can fight. 100%. And yeah. that Tommy Fury fight yeah. really showed that. I mean, it goes to a split decision against a legit undefeated box. But then Mike Tyson entered the chat. And, well, Rogan's tone changed a little. <sighs> okay, it changed a lot. One thing he doesn't want to do is fight Mike. No. He wants to fight Mike, I think. Why? I don't know. I don't give a f if he's 55. That's still Mike Tyson. Mike, Mike's in good shape, too. Oh, my God. Mike trains every day. He trains with Rafael mm -hmm. Cordero. All of this is promotion. Just give him fight some more promotion. I mean, Genie is moving in terms of making money. Oh, Mike Tyson survives. Who's a legend in MMA? He runs King's uh, mixed martial arts. Yeah, Mike, that guy can still yeah, f yeah, you up. He don't, don't want to fight Mike. In this world with hormone replacement and vitamins and like, and I don't give a f if you think he's 55 years old. That guy will hurt yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If Jake Paul's on the other side of the ring and he sees Mike Tyson just bobbing and weaving, he's going to have a, a recognition. Yeah. He's going to look over and go, oh my God, that's yeah. really Mike Tyson. And so Rogan actually had the chance to discuss Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson with the man himself on JRE back in 2022. So like I said, this idea has been floating around for years now, and it's no doubt been going back and forth between the two camps for a while. You know what's crazy? The fact that Mike Tyson doesn't really need the money. I mean, I would think that the guy had been in entertainment for a while. So it got to be a little bit more than just the money. But at the end of the day, man, a fight is a fight. When you get challenged by someone who's a, a guy like a Jake Paul, does that piss you off? Is no, it part, uh, part of it that's just like... my um, No, it doesn't. I, don't no? think, I think it's awesome. You think it's awesome? <laughs> yeah, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. cool. <laughs> you think it's cool? That's awesome. You can't take yourself too serious. Right. You know what I mean, the world will turn on you if you take yourself too serious. Who the hell am I to take myself too serious? Made all this money, got this reputation, and now I'm looking at people screw, 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 screw facing them down. Right. I have a great life. How am I going to be mad at somebody? Really, when you think about it, when my ego is not involved, how can I really be mad at somebody? So clearly, Mike's living his best life at the moment, and he enjoys being thrown into these kinds of conversations because it helps him to stay relevant. If you don't know his story, he went from earning hundreds of millions of dollars to basically going broke because of his bad spending habits and unstable lifestyle. Nowadays, he's doing fine. He's got his own podcast, his own companies. He does cameos in movies and TV commercials. And when I think back to when he really came back onto the radar, it was probably the first Hangover movie back in 2009. So Mike's well and truly been to hell and back and everywhere in between. That's so great that he hasn't given up. He keeps going and coming back. As long as you don't give up, life is good. So the man is making his money, but it's more than money. He's making his life. It's nice to have a, something to look forward to. So now he got a fight to look forward to. The guy's seen everything, right? And over the years, he's built a reputation for being unpredictable and, well, let's not sugarcoat this, the guy can be pretty wild, which is why he had so much entertainment value. Even Rogan got to experience this firsthand on his own podcast. Oh, Mike Tyson is still fighting demons, man. Wow. Those demons are still there. This Mike Tyson is the reason why this desk is this width. This is the exact same width as the, the studio desk in my old place, the exact same one. And I had a small one. I'm like, maybe it would be better if I'm a little closer to the people. But then I did a podcast with Tyson. I did two of them with Tyson. One, when he was high, when he's running Tyson's ranch, he had a little bit of a belly. He was jolly. He was just high all the time. We had a wonderful conversation. And then next time he came in is when he's preparing for the Roy Jones fight. Oh, and wow. He was jacked. And he made me so nervous. Like he was so keyed up, you could tell. Like he was ready to go. Oh, he was wow. ready to go. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Small table. I need to. Joe Rogan is a great promoter, man. He really know how to set the the scenario and get people pumped up about a future fight. Cause look at how he's describing things. You know, you got to give the guy props. He's been doing it for a while, and he's good at it. Be I, I need 
I need to not feel so nervous. I need to have some distance. So as I was thinking if I was any closer to Mike, so instead of like here, if I was like like this and he was that amped up, it would probably like affect the way I was communicating with him. I'd be nervous. He, he's an intimidating guy. Oh, yeah. I did that video and I was in bed for a week. <laughs> that was 30 <laughs> seconds and I was in bed for a week. <laughs> and it's not funny because it made me realize that this is this is this is big boy shit, okay big boy shit. it's big boy shit. Do that is right there yeah. that a 30 second video and in bed for a week this is insane wasn't really cool okay. see i'm not the guy you have to say hey mike man you know you gain a few pounds let's kind of work it out man you can do it hey you big fat dumb get your shit together. look you big fat mother you're a fat lady mother that motivates me. The right person needs to tell it to me too. Who the fuck's gonna say that to well, you? <laughs> they do. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I, I was I listen, I was I was somewhere around Freddie. I went somewhere. What does it mean um when fighting gets you gets you erect? What does that mean? It's a good question. It means you're weird. It means you're getting excited. Yeah. So that that's going through your mind right now. Well, that's how I get when I was a kid. And I, you know, sometimes it's, I get the twinkle. The twinkle. Yeah. When you're running, when you're hitting the bag, when that heart's beating again, and the, you know who you are, you're Mike motherfucking Tyson. So when you're doing all this shit again, you're still Mike Tyson. Those thoughts have got to be burning inside you again. It's got to be pretty wild. It gets you orgasmic. That's a strange thing to say. Well, that's just what I want. I wanted to find out because you're really bright. And I thought you would figure that. No, I'm being very serious. <clears throat> no, I know. I, I know you're being serious. But, I mean, no one will understand that other than you. Like, that's is your, your mindset. Man, Rogan's forehead was working overtime in that episode. And so the reason why I find all of this so interesting is this. Rogan's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and taekwondo. If you've ever seen him kick a bag, he's basically walking around with two baseball bats for legs. Now, this might be controversial, but I actually think Rogan would absolutely wipe the floor with Tyson. No question. Mike's one of the best boxers in the history of the sport, maybe even the GOAT, but that's in a boxing ring. If you're talking just a straight-up fight with no rules, unless Tyson gets to Joe's ears first, Joe would either throw some leg kicks and cripple Mike or take him down and choke him out. Now, that's not to say that Tyson doesn't clip him first. Sure, Rogan goes down and it's all over. But Rogan has so many more tools in his bag compared to just boxing that I don't even think it would be a contest. But the with thing, I think that's why Joe Rogan is not afraid to talk to Tyson like that. He's not afraid of getting in anybody's face and talking calmly because he knows nobody can touch him. The man knows how to defend himself. And he knows that one of the keys to fighting is to swing first. Because whoever swings first is going to be the winner, in my opinion. But let's keep listening. With all of that in mind, Rogan is still scared of Mike Tyson. What more of an endorsement do you need, right? I mean, Rogan's been ringside for some of the most brutal fights in UFC history, and he's completely comfortable in that world. So that's why I think this whole thing is a farce. Even at the age of 57, if this was a real boxing bout, Jake Paul could sustain some really serious head injuries stepping into the ring with Tyson. People are speculating that there's a no knockout clause in the contract, which I definitely agree with. But not only that, these guys are just trying to get paid. All that nonsense Jake's been spouting after he beat Nate Diaz that he was going to put his head down and focus on improving his skills again. And you know what? I wonder how many rounds are they going to give the audience? Because at the end of the day, I think it's all entertainment. You know, and they got to really rehearse and practice about what they're going to do to make it look real. Because on a real fight, Mike Tyson at 57, my God, we got to have the like, paramedics ready, ready to pick him up as soon as the fight is over. But again, I think it's only going to go maybe two rounds. But to get the money's worth, they should go to the full four rounds. Which is, For an exhibition fight, I think it's usually four rounds can't be more than that, especially for old man at 57 years old. Shout out to Mike Tyson. And it's real boxes. No more pay-per-views until he's ready to step into the ring and fight for a championship. It was all BS. Jake was just trying to stat Paddy's record so that when they announced this fight, 
he'd at least have a few more wins under his belt and not look like a complete idiot, which he clearly failed to do. And there's also a legitimate argument that Tyson's ruining his legacy by getting involved with YouTube boxes, similar to how people criticized Floyd Mayweather Jr. when he fought Logan Paul. Even for Netflix, it's a questionable move. They've worked so hard to build a reputation for producing good movies and TV shows. They even moved into stand-up comedy and became the holy grail for comedy specials. And so it makes sense that they would want to get involved in the live streaming of sports events. But there's no way people are going to take them seriously if this is how they're starting out. I like the idea of Netflix branching out and bringing different forms of entertainment to their platform, but this ain't it, in my opinion at least. Either way, I guess they're going to win because I'll definitely be tuning in. I'm mostly interested to see how Mike performs in his late 50s. I think if he trains well and stays healthy, he'll easily win. But one thing I've learned about the Paul brothers over the years, they very rarely put themselves in situations where they don't have complete control. Remember the Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. fight at the end of 2020? How Tyson basically didn't throw any punches to Jones's head? You know what? In today's scenario right streaming viewers getting people to watch getting people to to tune in i think those two brothers got a set up they know what's up they know that it's all about getting people's attention getting people to watch and they've been doing it long enough that they know not to hurt each other in terms of like these competitions all i pray for is that mike tyson comes out of this in health but these two young guys they're going to be good yeah I think we're probably going to see a repeat of that here. So stay tuned. It's three months away and I'm sure we're going to hear more about it in the meantime. But for now, that's it from me. Let me. All right. So. All right. Let me pause it right there. If you're still watching. Thank you so much. Hopefully you got entertained by this episode and it earned your subscription or at least a like. So make sure to hit a like on this video. So I can continue to keep coming on and providing videos for you guys. I got to practice on me talking and articulating my ideas and my thoughts. Not that easy. Battling a mess. No all over here. I'm just being verbal on life and things that are happening today. But, um, yeah, so that episode about Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, I think is something that we all going to be watching. That and the presidential debate are the two things that everybody's pumped up to see. I mean, if you're into politics, I'm into politics, so definitely... Looking forward to the presidential debate and looking forward for the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. Comment below. Let me know how you feel about this. And I give a shout out to the podcast. Hopefully they won't ban me for streaming it. It was a good episode. It's called Cringe Podcast. Podcast Cringe. That's what it's called. And what can I tell you? In order to do this job, to keep people's attention, keep people entertained, all it takes is practice. Doing it over and over again. I'm up to 3,796 subscribers. That's what it says. Um, so that's a lot of people, in my point of view. I'm a retired school teacher from New York, New York. Shout out to 134th Street, Harlem. That's where I grew up. And that's where my experience comes from. Harlem, New York, 134th Street. Come see me. Come visit. Come say what's up. But if you made it out the hood, hey, you did it. Step number one is to get out and then build your life outside of the city. Because living in the city, man, especially now that they have all the illegal migrants and with the illegal migrants, that's where they go. They go to the hood. So my neighborhood is probably filled with illegal migrants. And all that they can steal is crazy. Now, I clicked on that second video. Today I wasn't going to record because I didn't know what to talk about. I didn't know what topic to talk about. That was really an issue for me. Hey, but what if he knocks you out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous. I talked to his wife a couple days ago, and he's taking this serious, and he's training for it. Mike is a beast. Am I speeding up the video or slowing it down? Because how? Oh, that's normal. Wow. They must be speeding up. He looks like a beast. Hey, but what if he knocks you out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous.
Just look away. <laughs> Comment below, will you find Mike Tyson for a million dollars? I don't know. I think I would train for six months and then step in the ring for maybe a round. As soon as I see him getting pumped up, I'll just shoot myself to the floor. No, like that that will not be good, baby. No, just look away. <laughs> Day three. You still want to with me? And we're balls deep in the circus that is Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. And been paying close attention and of course everybody's got an opinion about who's going to win this fight come july 20 in texas now there are a couple of my money's on either being a tie well you know what mike tyson is a good guy he's a nice guy so he's probably going to give it up to jake paul who's younger and got more fights ahead of him so just to make jake paul look good i think mike Tyson's going to take the hit and going to take the loss and go all four rounds and at the end, fight going is going to go to Jake Paul. That's how it's going to play out. I bet you. Because there's no way Mike Tyson is going to look that young. He's going to make that young man look bad. A lot of things that have caught my attention that you may have missed. Most importantly, we now have confirmation about to wear headgear and the full extent of Jake's brother. I don't know what's going on with my internet, but it is what it is. Let's just keep reporting, and then this will be the last video. Logan Paul's involvement in the fight. There's also a very short video that Mike Tyson dropped a few days ago that really kind of freaked me out, and it's got nothing to do with boxing or training or anything like that. So yeah, you'll see what I mean in a moment when I play it for you guys. But just quickly, if you're new here and you want to stay up to date with all the drama happening in the podcast world, hit that subscribe button and become a regular viewer. Of Shout out to Podcast Cringe. They got great footage and the guy does a good job. Signature bratty style. He started the week off by trolling Mike Tyson, only to post again a couple of days later, revealing that man is in a private jet. You know, I ain't never been in a private jet. It's on my bucket list. So, but if I don't make it, it's cool. Let's keep it moving. His new training regime. St. Mark, day one of training. <laughs> Let me pause. You thought I was partying? We out here, high altitude, Colorado Springs, with the Olympia Team USA boxing. Let's get it. Let's go. Okay, hang on. I've got two questions. Number one, who is this guy? And number two, I think that's his father. Number one, and number two, these guys know how to promote. The trick to the big money fight is promotion. So we got two big guys going in the ring. That'll get a lot of viewers. That'll get a lot of money. Man. Why is a cringe influencer boxer training with Team USA Boxing? Are they really that desperate for exposure? I mean, this is almost as bad as all the companies that pay Brendan Schaub to do ad reads on his podcasts that no one watches. But there's nothing new here. We all know Jake Paul's formula. He's the self-proclaimed problem child who can't be stopped, controlled, or humbled, even though he lost his only fight to an actual boxer. Now, Mike Tyson, on the other hand, yeah, something's happening here, guys. He lost a fight, but he's younger. And he, could, he got the stamina to do a couple of more fights. But Tyson at 57? And so many of you called it in my last video, and now it's happening. What do you think about Tyson? Tyson fighting Jake Paul. I love yeah. Mike Tyson, and uh, I I'm, I'm not a fan of anybody fighting at, at our age. Um, but he's a grown man, obviously, and, you know, he's, he's going to do what he's going to do. But I, I talked to his wife a couple days ago, and he's taking this serious, and he's training for it. And... You know, yeah. so we'll see how it plays out. If you know what that means, well, you know what that means. But there is also a particular video I came across a couple of days ago that really made me stop and think, yeah, this just got real. Jake's got a problem on his hands here. Ladies and gentlemen, these are my final recordings of Hot Boxing. I really enjoy being a part of this journey and all the people that I met, the remarkable people that I met, and interviewed. And by now, for me, this is my next chapter in life. Please enjoy. You know, I got to give thanks that we're living in the time of Mike Tyson. We're living in the best time ever. Like, everything that we're seeing in front of us is amazing. You can't really 
want to live in a, any other time, you know? I thought it would be better to be living in the past, but right now when we have Mike Tyson, Elon Musk, Donald Trump, we have some of the craziest people on earth that are just role modeling and letting us know what can be done. Enjoy the following socials at Mike Tyson and MikeTyson.com for my next venture, please. I love you all. Okay, okay. So Mike Tyson just quit podcasting so he can focus on training for the fight with Jake Paul. Let me just repeat that. Mike Tyson quit podcasting <laughs> so he can focus on the Paul fight. How is that not one of the scariest Tyson videos you've ever seen? He's reading from a teleprompter below the camera. He's looking fit as hell. He's calm. He's articulate. Yeah, we all know how this ends. Well, let me come back to that because I want to show you a couple of clips from Jake Paul's podcast a couple of days ago where they discuss various aspects of the upcoming fight with Mike. and Look, Mike Tyson. I think everybody got so much love and respect for Mike Tyson. Maybe he wasn't getting those viewer numbers on his um, podcast. So he's switching to boxing to get more viewers. Because after the boxing match, a lot of people are going to be tuning into that um, hotbox or that podcast that he had. Just to hear how he sounds, how he talks, how he's doing after this fight. So that might be part of it. But it takes a brave man to step into the ring at that age. Clarify a few things regarding the terms and conditions of the... But I shouldn't say that. That's a known fact. I should say something else. The fight itself. What was interesting too about the dynamic between you guys, that whole shoot, was that in the past, you and Mike have been so friendly. Yeah. You weren't friendly the whole time. We were there for seven hours. There was no friendly... <laughs> laughing or giggling he was like it was like a different mode that he yeah, was yeah in. it's weird oh, i don't know scary. it's weird like scary. when <laughs> you got when, when you sign the contract him. something changes right like even if we want to feel that it's still like yo we are facing off so this is obviously something new for Jake. He's never really faced an opponent that could seriously change the course of the rest of his life. And you can tell that the reality of the situation is finally dawning on him. On the one hand, he's about to get one of his biggest paydays in history. But on the other hand, it's slowly dawning on him that he's fighting Mike Tyson. We have the footage of, of Mike's recent training. I think, I think you should watch. I don't know if you've seen his recent training footage, but it's pretty absurd. I still think we're kind of grazing over his age. I think we should touch on that a little bit more. But... This is him at 57. Yeah, this is what I watched before I made the parlay that he was knocking you out. So you have a parlay and uh, wait, no, what? <laughs> <laughs> the audible. Um, let me see this. All this promotion, all people talking, it's just going to increase the bets or the art. And also add bets like, is one of them going to live? Are they both going to live after this? I mean, one of them got to live. So they'll both live because these are crazy times. Babe, but what if he knocks you out? Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he sounds nervous. Just look away. <laughs> no, like that, that will not be good. Babe. No, just look away. Okay. Jake's never been a great actor, and you can tell right there that even though I'm sure he's been studying Mike's training footage, there's definitely an element of fear as the reality hits that he's about to step into the ring with someone who was dominating the boxing world when he was still swimming around in his daddy's nutsack. And that's why there have been all these rumors about headgear and 18 Oz gloves, and even Jake tag teaming his brother Logan into the ring. I saw a, a TikTok uh, covering this fight. It was like the most stupid shit I've ever seen in my we life. We have it. I think we can put it up. We, we... Jake Paul is all set to box against Mike Tyson this July, but the rules in this fight are absolutely absurd. First rule is for Paul's own safety. He'll be able to wear headgear like an amateur what? boxer, but Tyson won't be wearing any of that. That gives Paul a chance to knock Tyson out, but with his headgear, Jake Paul won't get knocked out and won't get badly injured. The second rule is that Jake is allowed to tag team with his brother, Logan Paul, but tag team isn't even the correct way of describing it, despite that being what the contract says, because he'll be able to bring Logan in and they'll both be able to fight at the All same right, time. That's probably where you could pause it because it, the, I mean, it just, it, it's so, it's so sad that like millions of people believe that it's absurd. Like, first of all, there's obviously none of that's true. Yeah. Cause that will be crazy. Tag team, two guys versus one Tyson. I mean, other people would jump in. Like you can't do that. That's crazy. Like 
no well, head gear. See if you come yeah. into range, no, but, if you but, have head but, gear like, on or not. No, but they're, they're so fucking <laughs> stupid. Like, anyone who believes that should not be allowed to vote. Like, actually, there should be, like, these... I thought of this. I was like, there should be these hidden tests throughout life that, like qualify you to be able to vote or not and they don't know that they're like taking a test but like the fact that these people are not only driving around on our street you know what's funny he said you gotta wear a helmet and you could tag your brother to jump in and both of you guys fight mike tyson like that would be hilarious but now we're talking wwe we're talking here all fake so the goal is to make it look real and to really have a real fight but you know what i'm gonna say my piece because my money's on Tyson, at least giving a competition. I don't know about winning, but just being able to stand around for at least two rounds, that would be insane. And Mike Tyson could stay on his feet for two rounds because at that age, your knee starts to buckle. You start to get old. It's not the same thing, you know? And I don't know how much practice it would take. But I don't think there is enough practice. As a matter of fact, they're waiting. So he's getting older and older. When you're young and you're practicing, it's cool to wait. In six months, you're gonna be stronger. But when you're old, in six months, you're gonna be older. So you're not really gonna be stronger. So that's what I'm thinking. At this point, all we gotta do is cross our fingers and hope Tyson stays on his feet for at least two rounds. And hopefully these guys will practice on the low, on in the gym, and just practice how they're gonna move around in the ring. Like what kind of a show are they gonna put for people? Because the goal is to make it look serious. So they're going to put a show, and it's all about viewership, and the goal is not to hurt anybody. Like, seriously hurt anybody. All they got to do is make it look real. Plus, he already took a beating from other boxers, Jake Paul. So Jake Paul could take a couple of hits. But Mike Tyson, on the other hand... Prayers go out to Mike Tyson. Comment below. What do you think? Who's going to win this fight? Where's your money at? And I don't think we're going to be able to stream the fight. It's probably going to be on Netflix. I think that's what he said. If they're on Netflix, Netflix is going to make a lot of money. It's going to be a great fight. I'm glad I have. Well, I don't have Netflix. But somebody else does, and they let me use their account. It is what it is. Peace. Wait. What am I doing? The burbles are nice. My name is Noel, battling MS, still walking and talking. And that's why I'm making this podcast here at Verbal on Life. Thank you for tuning in. If you found value in this video, hopefully I didn't bore you and you actually learned something about Mike Tyson. Go ahead and click on that like button and subscribe. The edge is up below. I'm trying to figure out how X works. It says I got seven viewers on X. So those of you viewing the show, just know that I'm still alive, still walking, not giving up. I'm 44 years old, and I cannot find Mike Tyson, especially with this disabilitating problem I got. It is what it is. All right, let me try to stand up, because for me, standing up is a journey. It is difficult. You know what I want to do more and more? I want to look at the camera and practice. Practice talking into the camera. It's actually a skill, and you got to keep your thoughts together. In order to keep the, the audience, whoever is listening, following your thought or following your conversation. I got this one problem that I jump all over the place, right? Here we are looking at the Mike Tyson fight. At the same time, after that, I want to... Talk about other things. I want to be verbal about other things in life, right? Right away, I just jump to the presidential election. I know Mike Tyson and Trump are friends, very good friends. And that would be, yo, that would be the best. If Trump walks out Mike Tyson, that would be the best ever. If you have Donald Trump walking out Mike Tyson, that's insane. That would be the best. You're going to get so many people voting for that man. There's no way you're going to lose. And no, to get Donald Trump to walk Mike Tyson out into the ring, but Trump wearing his ankle bracelet, because you know he's going to go to jail next week. Next week, they're going to say if he's guilty or not guilty in New York, right? 
So if Donald Trump is found guilty in New York, the judge is going to send him to, to Rikers Island right away. So if he sends him to Rikers Island, the only way he's going to let him out is with an ankle bracelet. I think, you know, I'm just assuming here. So if Mike Tyson, I'm sorry, if Trump goes to jail and then is allowed to go to the fight to see Mike Tyson and to walk him out with an ankle bracelet, you know, you know how gangster that is to see Trump with an ankle bracelet. I'll be like, yo, everybody's going to vote for him. Like this man owes it to Tyson and very good friend with Tyson. And he walked all the way to the gym, to the ring. See, I got to learn how to communicate a little better. But that would be ideal to have Trump walking out Mike Tyson. So here you go. I mixed two conversations in one. What else I was going to say? So yeah, I want to, next week, I want to tune in to see, oh, you should tune into my channel because we're going to see if they let Trump out next week. Because if next week, Tuesday, right? Monday's the final day that Michael Cohen is going to be talking to the lawyers. So then Tuesday is going to give their closing arguments and send it over to the lawyer, to the, to the jury. And then the jury have to decide past next Tuesday. Wednesday they're off. So Thursday is going to be when they're going to read the verdict. Is it guilty or not? So on Thursday in New York, it's normal not to, once you get, Called guilty in New York, right then and there they put the handcuffs on you and take you out back. They don't send you home. So that means that the Secret Service have been preparing for this moment. They've been in communication with the judge about how they're going to do it because you cannot lock up the Secret Service agents. So that means that they're going to just outright walk away from Trump. So that means Trump got to fend for himself in jail while he is going through his sentence. No way until he appeals. So this is going to be gangster next week. Um, and I think Trump, Trump probably is going to get an excuse to go to the debate, which is in June. And he's probably going to go with an ankle bracelet to the debate. That would be gangster. We see Trump with an ankle bracelet going to the debate like, yo, I'm here. Let's do this. Talk about it. And then showing up to the Mike Tyson fight also with an ankle bracelet. That would be epic. First president or ex-president with an ankle bracelet. And then have to wear it all the way till he gets reelected in November. After he gets reelected, then they'll let him out because he could pardon himself. Well, I don't know if he's allowed to pardon himself from a state, from state prison. So he'll be in jail until November, and then in November he could get out. Or he might get excused by the governor of New York. Um because if not, we're going to have a president that's locked up in jail. That would be too funny. So there you go, me being verbal on life. Crazy things happening. Mike Tyson and Donald Trump, that's how I see that relationship in my head. Now, I'm tired of sitting down. This is not easy to sit. Let me, let me try to get up. What else is there to talk about? Big on the news, it says Mike Tyson, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen got famous on social media selling merchandise. And so, oh yeah, the Senate, they had a fight, like high school chicken heads. You had AOC arguing with MGT, Margaret Taylor, MTG, Myler, I forgot her name, but it's MTG, arguing with AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Arguing with Taylor Green. I forgot her name. MTG. Michelle. I forgot her name. But they were arguing like they were in high school. Like you could do that. You could argue like you retarded. All the women were just arguing like they were retarded. And I was going to do a video on that. The people in the Senate, the women of the Senate argument. Just like there was a Secret Service agent that got into a fight and she got arrested. And it was a female. She was a DEI hire, a secret service agent. I was like, you cannot do that job and argue. That's insane. You're supposed to be protecting the vice. It was a vice president, secret service agent. So right there, just forget the vice president got into a fight. That's crazy. But 
What can we do? DEI hire. Wow, I was on this for 40 minutes. That means we could get up and walk. You know how hard it is to get up and walk? Thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing. Noel Battling MS here at Verbal on Life. Peace.